Rat Trap Productions, we show you how to do stuff. Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple recording using Logic Pro X and a few microphones. I'm going to record an acoustic instrument, an acoustic guitar. So I like to use two condenser microphones on an acoustic. You can mess around, throw a 57 on there, throw a 58. You could throw a large diaphragm, small diaphragm, microphone, whatever you want. So now I'm going to run cables and run these to my interface. Here's my audio interface. It's what you interface with to record. I'm sorry. I'm going to put this in channel 1 and channel 2 for those two microphones. This is channel 1 level, this is channel 2, channel 3, channel 4, channel 5. Open up Logic Pro, open up a new, I want audio because I'm going to be using microphones. If I was going to use the drummer program, if I was going to use a keyboard or something like that, I would choose something else, but I'm just going to use microphones. So don't worry about it, just create. Here is my one input. This is the channel strip for this input. And then they send it to two buses, which will be like reverb or something like that. Don't worry about that yet. I want two of these, though, so I'm just going to click to add another one. Then I'm going to label them. Mic 1, Mic 2. All right, I want to see my mixing board because I like doing it this way. Some people don't need to see the mixing board at all, but as if this was a mixing board in front of you, this is going to be for one microphone, this is going to be for another microphone. All right, watch this. So now I'm going to turn the interface on and watch what magically happens. Hear my speakers kick on. What number of inputs has changed? Yep, it sure has. Now if you notice, automatically, this has changed. Notice that instead of saying built-in output, built-in input, it's saying the audio box 1818 VSL. All right, now I'm going to give these inputs. Mic 1, I want that to be input 1. For mic 2, I want it to be input 2, okay? This is for that microphone that's in channel 2. This is for channel 1. I can see that I got some, got some mics, mic levels going. I'm going to go ahead and hit both of these. These are the recording tabs, which means my mics are hot. I'm ready to go. If I hit record with these buttons red, that means that these two channels would record. Okay? Notice that there's nothing on this one at all. These are my bus channels. Remember I said that there was these two buses? These are my bus channels. So looks like they put two reverb channels because this, this is a reverb program that's on um, Logic Pro. These are house programs or built-in programs, all right? What I can do is I can customize these channels. Here you see that you have an acoustic guitar pack, and what this is is the experts at Logic Pro have given you a bunch of different types of EQs and compressors and things that they put on the channel because they think that that sounds like a good sharp chorus, all right? I'm ready, so I'm going to go ahead and tap both microphones. Tap, tap, tap. That microphone's hot. Tap, tap, tap. This one's not as hot. What I need to do now is go to my interface and make sure that both of them are roughly the same level. I don't want to hear monitoring, so I'm going to hear. I could, I would be able to hear the, the microphones. I don't want to hear them because I'm playing acoustic guitar. So I'm going to click those so that it's not. These two are red, so I'm ready to go. I got my tempo all set at 75 beats per minute, and I got my metronome ready to rock. So here we go. I'm going to hit record. Done and recorded. Now I'm going to save it. 
and I'm going to title it. I'm just going to say. I'm going to take these guitars. I'm going to pan them over to the right. Okay? I'm going to add two more channels. I'm going to pan these to the left. I don't want to record that one. I want to record this one and this one. So, first thing I got to do is fix the fix the inputs. This is input one. The reason I can't turn this both of these on is because they're going to the same input. Input two, input two. I'll be able to hit both of them now. Okay? I can have them where they're being monitored. I don't want to have them monitored. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to record this again because I want two separate guitar tracks on this. One pan to the right and one pan to the left. Okay, when I was recording the second one, I messed up. So I decided, it's rather than doing the entire song over again, I just punched in a little spot before the mess up. So like, say the mess up happened right here, I just punched in a little spot before that. Now the problem is, when I play this back, it sounds a little funny. Why don't, I'll go ahead and turn this up, because it's only on, well actually, I'll, I'll put it in both speakers here, so you can hear what that sounds like. Let's listen to that again. Hear that? To get rid of that, here's what I did. I found a spot that did not sound bad. Listen to this. So that sounds much better, right? Okay. Now I needed to put both of these in the same exact spot here and here because this is the same guitar. This is the second take of the same guitar. Okay, I make those left. All right, I have to do them in the same spot because if they're staggered wrong, let's say it's staggered like this, it's gonna sound really funny. Okay, I don't know if you could pick that up, but you could definitely tell there was a tone difference. Then that's because it has lost a guitar. So what I'm gonna do, what we do is we put it here. When I have to match them up, I just match line by line, and then it sounds. Now when we unmute, and you can hear all of them. I'm gonna hit these arrows to minimize this. That's how you can control your punch-ins. When I play this through, you'll notice that the stereo out is too hot. Negative one, that's pretty hot. We don't want that. See how it's red? That means it's over zero. We don't like that. So what I want to do is I need, I can either pull out some volume from the stereo. I could take two decibels out of this or four decibels out of this. Or what I can do is affect these channels. I prefer to affect these channels because I like to have a little more headroom than this. So what I'm going to do is I want to affect all of them at the same time. I can either type in negative two here. I can type in negative two and I keep on going down the line. Okay. Or I can do something slicker. I'm going to put this in a group. Group one. Okay. I'm going to call this group acoustic guitars. I want to put this one in the same group, put this one in the same group, and this one in the same group. Now, what I do to one, I do to all. Let's take 4 dB out of it. Okay? Go ahead and go back. Let's play and see what this looks like. Better. It's still kind of hot. I prefer not to have that hot even. So I'm going to go ahead and take another little bit out. So we're almost 5 dB under now. So that's how I can affect every single one of them. What I do individually to the channel inserts will be different. That's not included in this cool deal. Selected these. Made sure my marker, my time playback. 
That's where it, at the beginning, I'm going to hit File, Bounce, Project or Section. There's a number of things, ways I can bounce or a number of file types I can bounce to. This goes to a more like a WAV file. This is Apple lossless. I can burn it to a CD, write to a CD or DVD. I can burn it to an MP3. I'm going to choose for you just an MP3. I'm going to um, bounce it offline, not in real time. Real time's the best way to bounce it, uh, especially if you were wanted a super high quality file, you'd bounce it 24-bit, uh, non-dithered, and in real time. And it goes through and it has to play the whole song to, to uh, go ahead and, and uh, bounce. Uh, I just want to show you a quick way to bounce offline. So I'm going to go MP3 offline. This will be really fast. You'll notice I'm going to ahead and hit OK. That's what I want to name my file. It's going to the desktop, bounce, replace. There we go. Doo -doo -doo. Easy peasy, just like this. This is about right there. And I go ahead and listen to it. I can put it in my iTunes. I can do whatever. So, Rat Trap Productions, we teach you how to do stuff today. I taught you how to do a very simple, easy, and basic recording using Logic Pro X and an interface.